We're back once again. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. I'm one of the technicians here. I'm uh, involved in the gearheads on demand service that we provide at Golf Cart Garage. Every week we come here and go live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. We are live right now. And we go over questions that we've received at the garage over the week or the past month or we get questions every day. So we're going to go over some questions now. Uh, this is Thursday, February 10th. It is noon, Central Standard Time, where I'm at. Uh, we're going to get started, see if we can save some people some money, see if we can answer some people's questions, uh, help them out a little bit. The garage is now open, so let's get started. Question number one. This is from Robert P. My 2015 RXV cart has fully charged new Trojan batteries, 4 equals 48 volts. I failed to keep them charged this winter, but after putting an initial charge on them and then charge them fully with my Delta charger, the cart will not move. My questions are, do all EasyGo carts have a reset button on the electric motor? Uh, well, the answer to that one is no, they don't. It, it is wired as my horn and headlights and turn signals work fine. The battery light on the dash suddenly does not work. Your thoughts, please. Well, the part that's got me, uh, that, that brings up questions in my mind uh, from what you said, is that the, the battery light on the dash, does not, the charging battery light on the dash does not work. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about there, but I'm assuming you're talking about some sort of battery gauge or something on the, on the dash that's not working all of a sudden. So if that's not working, then I need to verify, I would need to verify that your charger is working. I need to verify that. Like when you plug your charger in, I know you said that you fully charged the cart, but I would need to verify that it is actually fully charging the cart. So in other words, I would need battery readings at rest, like just what I mean by at rest is like take a battery reading before you plug your charger in. That would be considered at rest, just sitting there. And what is that battery reading there? Now with your, your voltmeter, still attached your voltmeter your handy voltmeter still attached to the battery plug the charger in and watch your voltmeter and make sure that the battery make sure that it is actually has some output and it's going into the batteries and what you'll see is you'll see the volts rise on your voltmeter i would want to verify that first since you said that you let the uh the the batteries deplete over the winter and uh I need to verify that and and it's because you said that charging light's not coming on that that's kind of kind of suspicious there so that's what I would want to do there all right let's go to number two I have a 2001 club car DS electric car I'm having a problem with it when I drive it it starts to cut out it's like I took my foot off the throttle pedal then about one or two seconds later it starts to go again it seems to do this at random times I have replaced the batteries and charger and solenoid I'm not sure where to go from here In, in 2001, you could have one of two electrical systems in, in that car. One of them is, it has a mechanical forward and reverse lever. And what I mean by mechanical forward and reverse lever is that it's the, the kind where you have to, the forward and reverse lever, you have to physically turn it a long way to go into forward and then you have to turn it like almost 180 degrees to go into reverse. That's one type of electrical system. The other type is just push button forward and reverse, just pushing, pushing buttons. So this is what I would do. It's, it's very difficult to, to diagnose a car that is running that's intermittent like what you're describing. So the minute that it fails, if you have the forward and if you have the uh, mechanical forward and reverse lever, the minute that it fails, just grab that forward and reverse lever and put some pressure on it a little bit and see if you can feel it jump or anything like that. We're trying to isolate where the, where the issue is. If it turns out not to be the forward and reverse lever, then it's most likely going to be your M core. I mean, your, your car in 2001 is going to have an M core. It's, uh, that's, it's most likely going to be that. Yeah, but I'd want to eliminate the easy stuff first and it'd be easy to eliminate that because those mechanical forward and reverse levers, they will go out. They will go out over the years and they'll start giving you some intermittent issues sometimes. 
So that's what I would do with that. Let's look at number three. How do you test a potentiometer to see if it's bad? Well, depending, depending on which model cart you have, uh, it's going to it's going to change the test. There is a test for every potentiometer and every specific model and make, and make car. There is going to be some type of test. The, uh, it, and it may involve, I don't know if, if you're going to, you know, these, you know, a regular voltmeter has just regular leads on it. Well, they make, uh, they make leads that can go on your voltmeter that have clips. They're called alligator clips where you can actually put them on a wire or you can, or they even have insulation piercing probe, uh, leads that actually pierce the insulation on a wire and clip onto it. So in other words, you don't have to be where the wire is connected. You can just put a, a lead on a wire uh, and it will pierce the insulation and you can get a reading off of that one particular wire. Well, every type of potentiometer is going to have a real specific test on what you're testing for. Like club car, you're going to be looking for voltage one to five volts and then you're going to be looking for zero to 5,000 5, ohms uh, but in a, on a specific wire. Uh, easy go you're going to you're going to be testing the inductive throttle sensor is what easy go uses for a potentiometer and you're going to be looking for uh, i think it's 1 to 14 volts on a specific wire on that one and then yamaha it's a, it's a whole nother test so there is a specific test depending on which cart you have uh, and you're most likely going to be looking for either 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 5000 ohms uh, just one of those two because that's the signal that your potentiometer is sending to your controller. Let's see, number four. When I plug in the charger it goes to full charge. Black wire on cart plug gets hot. Needle on charger vibrates but doesn't seem to charge batteries. Well, a, a wire getting hot when you're, when you're trying to charge is an indication of, could be an indication of a few things. Uh, uh, the black wire is most likely the negative coming out of your charger. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what black wire you're talking about there. It could be the, the black wire leaving your charging receptacle that's, go, that's connected to your battery pack. Uh, it could be that, what you're talking about. But heat, hot, is is indication of something you know it's an indication of either something's wired wrong or it could be an indication of really really dead batteries and your chargers having to work really hard in order to do it now you mentioned your 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 needle vibrates and you're not really sure if it's charging the batteries well that's where we need to verify whether or not it is or not you need to have a voltmeter and put it on your batteries while that's happening and see if the voltage is going up in your batteries and if not that needle vibration is most likely a indication of something wrong with your charger your charger probably has a bad diode i've seen bad diodes in club cars called diode slash rectifier and easy go it has a little heat sink with diodes on it when a diode goes bad sometimes i've seen the needle either just vibrate and sit there or go backwards on the on the gauge and actually pop the circuit breaker on the charger itself so you could have a diode issue in your charger also let's see here number five Hello, this is from Frank. Hello, I just installed an EG4 48 volt lithium battery. I took it out for a test drive and now my motor brake locks up with it without touching the brake pedal. Now the cart shudders when I push on the accelerator and the brake locks up within three feet of movement. Okay, I'm not familiar with the EG4 lithium battery, but the one thing that you said that bothers me is is that you described it as a shutter, and uh, that would make me want to get a battery reading off of your lithium battery, because what happens when a a battery drops down to to an unsafe voltage and then you try to put a load on it, it can cause an electrical shutter. So it could be something to do with your battery that you, you might want to check with your manufacturer of that particular lithium battery and see what they say uh, about your situation. Because low voltage could cause your motor brake to lock up too. So 
I'm, I would need to verify that we're not in some type of low voltage situation. Uh, on, even though it's a lithium battery, I still wouldn't want to verify that. Okay, number six. This is from Gary. Hi, the three-pronged device green light stays on for about four seconds and then goes out. My batteries will not charge because of this. Will replacing that plug-in solve my problem or do you think I need to buy a whole new charger? I think I understand your question. I think I know what you're talking about. But that green light that's uh, you know that that's going out, that's the fault code telling you something. So we need to figure out what the you know what what the issue is uh, before we jump on your charger as being the problem or your receptacle as being the your charging receptacle as being the problem. So let's eliminate the batteries first. Let's just take you know reading off the batteries. Make sure that they're high enough in order to turn your charger on because your charger needs to see a certain amount of voltage before it's going to come on and it could be as simple as your batteries are the, the voltage in your batteries is too low and it's not seeing it and so it, it's not seeing the correct voltage and then it shuts off and won't charge your car if that's the case then we're going to have to figure out how to get your voltage up in your car but uh it, it could be your charging receptacle you know it, it's a, it could be that also it, it could that could be a, an issue but let's eliminate the the easy stuff first if you could try another charger on your car that would be an easy way to eliminate your charger as being the problem uh, it's a common it's going to be a you know someone else is going to have a charger exactly like what you're using that would be an easy way to eliminate that part of it let's see number seven. I need to fix my car. It is hitting the tire. What spare parts do you think is necessary for this? Okay, something is hitting the tire. I'm assuming what you're talking about is like uh, when you, you turn the steering wheel all the way and something's hitting the tire. Uh, well, if it's, a, if it's a stock golf cart that's never been modified, that should not happen. So if that's happening then you have a worn out part somewhere in the front end could be steering box could be a bent spindle uh, could be a bent a arms like on a club car precedent they have these weak a arms you know that can bend when they just barely tap a curb uh, it, it could be several things so you just need to make sure first that nothing is bent that's caused this or you know if you, if your car has been modified then you might need to get a offset rim or a bigger rim just so it won't rub you know our spacers they we, they even make uh, spacers so you can space your your wheels out a little bit just to get them a little bit further away from the car just need to uh, make sure that nothing is bent first before we proceed let's see number eight my cart has three 12 volt batteries what size cable do I need Well, if your cart has three 12 volt batteries, then somebody put those in there because it, it most likely did not come with three uh, 12 volt batteries. If it's one of the major brands, uh, Easy Go, Club Car, or Yamaha, it did not come with three 12 volt batteries. That's just what some somebody did that because it's a little bit cheaper to buy three 12 volts than it is six six volts. Uh, so it, it will work. I'm not saying that that won't work. That, that you just won't have near as much of a range that you can drive the car before it needs recharging as you would with six six volts. Now, as far as cable size, it wouldn't be any different than the than the, than the stock size cable used on the six six volt configuration, which is six gauge cable. That's pretty much what uh, all golf carts come with. Stock is six gauge cable. So that's what size it, it, that would be fine. If you're if you're happy with the three 12 volt setup that you got going on, if it's charging correctly, if the car caught running, doing what you need it to do, then by all means, just leave it that way. Uh, but six gauge cable would be fine. Number nine. I have a 2012 Easygo RXV electric cart and want an extra set of keys. How do I determine the correct replacement keys? Well, you go to golfcartgarage.com for an for a EasyGo RXV. Go to golfcartgarage.com, and on our homepage, there is a search bar at the top of the page, and you plug in uh, this part number in the search bar, K-E-Y-E-Z-2, 
K-E-Y-E-Z-2. That's keys for a uh, 2012 RXV. All right, let's see, number 10. This is from Brian. I bought the Lester Summit 2 charger and hardwired it to my 2004 Club Car Precedent electric golf cart. Was informed by a day video that all I had to do was hook it up permanently to the 48 volt cart and didn't have to do anything else with the OBC or anything else. For some reason, I lost the clicking of my solenoid, so I'm getting nothing when I'm pushing the paddle down. I replaced the potentiometer, ignition, F and R switch, and solenoid with new diode and still no clicking of solenoid. Battery voltage is over 50 volts. Well, the 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 summit, the charging circuit is completely separate from you know everything else on your golf cart. So just by hooking up the summit two, it's this is what I would say: disconnect the summit two and see if it, if it, things start working again. And if if it does, then it's going to be something to do with the little blue wire. You can just disconnect the blue wire. The blue wire is sending a lockout signal to your to your controller, and because if that solenoid doesn't click, your car's never going to run until you get the solenoid clicking. So I would disconnect the summit two right off the bat, and just to see if that changes anything, because it shouldn't have changed anything by connecting it. But let's disconnect it just to verify that. Uh, otherwise, you have another you have a completely different problem. But it, it it does seem does seem odd that you just that's all you did was connect the summit to charger hardwired it in, and and if that is the case, then it's going to be the blue wire. Number eleven. I'm having issues of charger not working and don't know what to do next. If I jumper the two power wires on the relay, the transformer hums and gets warm. Circuit board diodes and capacitor. Can you help me with the part numbers? And you included pictures, so I see that that's an easy go. Total charge is what that charger is. It's an old charger, but parts are still available. Uh, from what you said, you said you jumpered the relay and the transformer comes on and you can hear it. Well, at that point, I would want voltmeter readings to see if it's outputting a 100%. That's a 36 volt charger that you're talking about. If you jumper the relay and the, and the charger comes on, take a voltmeter reading on the end of the plug to see what it's putting out. It should be putting out about 46, 47 volts, something like that, out of the end of the plug. If it is, it seems like to me at this point the only thing wrong is that relay. Well, since that relay is mounted to that circuit board and it's not removable, you have to replace that entire circuit board. So you just need a circuit board for a total charge charger and you go to golfcartgarage.com and plug in this number. Remember earlier I talked about the search bar at the top of the page? At the search bar plug in CGR-083. That's the part number for the circuit board for a total charge 36 volt charger. Let's see, number 12. As I mentioned, the shocks are completely compressed and the suspension is basically sitting on the leaf springs and the bushings. We have already busted one set of bushings, so these have been replaced, but you can see how compressed the lower bushings are currently. The cart rides extremely bumpy and bounces. I have changed wheels and tire kits, hubs, etc. But it seems to be a suspension issue and there's really not a working suspension in the front and limited in the rear. Looking for some advice on what to do to correct this issue. It it looks and you included some pictures and that's good. It looks to me like it could be a lift kit issue that is a. Uh, it either needed some shorter shocks that should have been included because if your shocks are completely compressed, you're correct. There's no suspension. I mean, it's just a, it's rigid, so. Uh, it, they're completely compressed. So, in other words, if they were shorter to begin with, you may may have a little bit of suspension. That's what I was. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I didn't recognize what lift kit it was that that you had on that car, but uh, you might want to get in touch with the whatever lift kit manufacturer that that was, or ever where that lift kit came from, just to verify that it's this this the correct one for your car, and you didn't need to get uh, some different shocks, you know, in order to to do that. 
Uh, in the pictures, I could tell that you had some low profile tires on there. Those are, those are actually contributing to the rough ride a little bit. You might want to lower the air pressure and nose to, that's about the only thing you can do. Low profile tires, generally the lower the profile, the rougher the ride is going to be. And that in conjunction with your suspension issue, I, I bet that is kind of harsh. So I'm, I would want to verify that lift kit is the correct one for that car and see if there was any parts that you were missing. Let's see, number 13. What is the largest tire for a 2004 Yamaha G27 U-Max? A Yamaha G27 U-Max is a, it's not really a golf cart. It is, a, it, it's a golf cart that's a, that is Yamaha sales out of their utility line. So it kind of already has a little bit of a lift kit, and a little bit taller tire. They come, they come with, with 20 inch tires. Uh, I wouldn't try to go any, any taller than that. It would just be trial and error, you know, it, uh, but the next step, there's not a lot of 21 inch tires out there. Uh, there's a lot of 22s. It would just be a trial and error to try to see if the 22 is going to give you any problems. And if it did, you might go with an offset rim and it might get it out of the way. But uh, a G27, the, the 20s, they kind of fill up the, the, you know, the opening pretty good. I was looking at some pictures of it. They fill up the opening pretty full. So you're not going to be able to go too much taller than 20s. Uh, so you might, uh, maybe you could get one for a test, you know, see if you could find two 20s, uh, two 22s for a test just to see if that would work or not. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at the three inch drop spindle lift kit for my golf cart, 2010 precedent. Does it allow for front end alignment? Well, it kind of depends on what you mean by front end alignment because uh, drop spindle lift kits do not allow for caster or camber adjustment. They, because it's a drop spindle and it connects to your tie rods, you still have the ability to do toe in and toe out. That would be this toe in and toe out adjustment, but you do not have the ability for camber and caster adjustment. That would be this of your tires. Now we sell a, a camber correction kit for a precedent. So you could get the drop spindle and then the camber correction kit if it was too, if, if your camber or caster was too far off. So uh, to answer your question, no, they, they don't allow for a full front end alignment, but they, they allow for toe in and toe out. That's it. Okay. What are some of the things that would cause a no click situation of the solenoid on my club car 2004 48 volt? I have changed the potentiometer, forward and reverse switch, key switch and solenoid and diode. It has a new Lester Summit 2 with the onboard charger installed on it. Wrong terminals with a question mark. Hmm. Well, uh, sure, it could be, you know, if it's hooked to the wrong terminals, but your, your Lester Summit 2 is supposed to be hooked to the first battery positive with the red wire and the last battery negative with the black wire. And then there's also a blue wire if you've got it hardwired. And you might want to disconnect that blue wire and see if that's why your solenoid's not clicking. Uh, this is a very similar question to the other one that we had earlier in this session. So I would disconnect the Lester Summit 2 and see if that, that changes anything. All right, number 16. I'm purchasing a 2001 Yamaha G16 gas golf cart that has been lifted. The previous owner used it in sandy terrain, but, I, but it will be used on gravel slash pavement. The front wheels are tilted quite noticeably. I believe they call this a camber issue. What do you recommend to correct this and make safer to use on firmer pavement? Also, I noticed a droop on the driver's side rear. I think this may have something to do with the spring or spring assembly. Your thoughts? Well, most lift kits do not have, most of the lesser expensive lift kits, let me rephrase that. 
they don't have adjustment for camber and caster. It's only the higher end A-arm lift kits that have adjustment for camber and caster. So one way to fix that issue on your cart, because there's no adjustment on it now, I'm assuming, or you have already, you've already figured out where it would be on, on your particular lift kit, would be to change your lift kit out. Change the lift kit to one that does have camber and caster adjustment. There are several out there that do. Now, there's gonna be a more expensive lift kit than what is on there, though. Uh, the the droop in the rear. See, Yamaha's, Yamaha doesn't use leaf springs in the rear. They use coil over shocks, and they also make heavy duty coil overs to go over your existing shock. Like you take the, the original spring off of the shock, the coil over, and you replace it with a heavy duty coil over. And I guarantee you that'll, that'll take your droop out of the driver's side. Golf carts tend to, over the years, they always are gonna droop on the driver's side because they spend a lot of time with one person driving around in them and all the weights on that one side. So it's very common to see a golf cart that droops a little bit to the driver's side, especially after, they, after a certain amount of years. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to go over to Facebook and YouTube, see what's got any live people there. Let's see. Facebook, looks like we're cool there. And we got them on YouTube. I uh, got Herb Caldwell, says my first time here. Hello, Herb. Good to have you in the chat. Let's see. Noel Knight. Thanks for joining the chat. I have a 2013 Yamaha G29. If I drive it every day, no problem. If it sits over a couple of days, I have to choke it and it will start immediately and run fine for the rest of the day. Well, I can tell you this, uh, uh, is it a, is this a fuel injected car? 2013, I know 2012 Yamaha G29s, you could get either carbureted or fuel injected so if this is a if this is a fuel injected g29 you shouldn't have to choke it but if it's a if it's a carbureted g29 then that wouldn't be that that wouldn't be that big a deal that'd be i would consider that normal uh you choke it one time and it'll start and then runs fine for the rest of the day yeah that that's how i have a yamaha gas cart and that's what i have to do i have to choke it every time at the beginning of the day but then it runs fine i don't have to choke it anymore after that Let's see. I'll leave this leave this running while I while I close. Let's see. I wanted to remind everybody that uh like I was telling you earlier, I'm part of the Gearheads on Demand service that's uh that's offered here at Golf Cart Garage. You can go to golfcartgarage.com and uh you can look at a uh, on the on the home page look for this look for this logo you just might have to scroll down a little bit click on this logo and you know, you'll see all these time slots that become available you can sign up for a phone call with me if you think you need to speak with me about a golf cart issue uh, if you think it's something that I need to see in order for me to help you you can also sign up for a video session where I will send a link to your smartphone and at the designated time that you picked, at the convenient time that you picked, you'll get a link on your smartphone. All you do is you click the link, you just hit the link, that's it. And then, boom, I'm there, and then I can see what you're pointing at. And you know, like you can show me your, your issue if you think it's something I need to see. Or you can just schedule a regular phone call, and I'll call you at, at, the, at the scheduled time. I wanted to remind everybody about that. Uh, let's see, we get a, I started doing a little tech tip at the end of uh, these sessions lately. And a question came up this week from a customer that I wanted to address. And, and the reason is, is because a lot of people nowadays are doing lithium battery conversions. And, you know, it can get confusing when you're talking about uh, lithium versus lead acid and then amp hour uh, versus amp hour at a certain uh, minutes. And it, it can get confusing. So the simplest way, the, the, the question was, a customer calls up and says, should I get the 80 amp hour lithium set for my conversion or should I get the 100 amp hour lithium set for my conversion? Because the lithium companies, the ones that we sell, they offer you different configurations. Well, all of these configurations have to do with range, not how long the batteries last, you know, in the lifetime or whatever, but it has to do with range. So if your cart was driving like with a lead acid pack before, 
let's say that you could play 18 holes of golf uh, with no problem with the lead acid pack. Uh, let's say that you could drive, you could drive it 20, 20, 25 miles before you needed to recharge it. Well, I can tell you this, even the lowest lithium amp hour set that you could get is going to give you at least that much range. 20 to 25 miles is not going to be a problem at all. So, but, so if you're, if you know, you're, you're going to increase your range compared to your lead acid pack, no matter which one you get. Amp hour is directly related to the distance that your golf cart can travel before it needs to be recharged. That's the easiest way to explain it. It is directly related to the distance your golf cart can travel before it can be recharged. If you're fine with driving 20, 25 miles, then get the lower amp hour. You're not going to need the 100 amp hour because that'll go like 50 miles. I mean, not very many people need to go 50 miles in their golf cart. So anyway, that's just something that I wanted to kind of put it in more simple terms so people could understand uh, a little better because we're going to start getting that question a lot because the lithium's, uh, lithium prices have come down. There's more competition out there with lithium. They're more readily available for golf cars. It's a, it's a great conversion. It's a, it's a great thing. It's, it's, gonna, it's just going to revolutionize. I mean, just like it has in the electric car industry, it's going to revolutionize the golf cart industry too. Let me see. I'll check uh, Facebook one more time. And I'll check YouTube one more time. No, it looks like about it. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, Season 2 of Extreme Golf Cart Makeover has officially launched. Go to the golfcartgarage.com. Look for this for more info. Dave has launched a video that shows, you know, it talks about it, gives all the info that you need to know. Um, there's going to be prizes. He is, Dave is going to transform a regular EasyGo TXT into something that's uh, awesome. So it's going to it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good it's going to be a good thing. So go there and check that out. Go to Golf Cart Garage. Look for this for more info on that. Well, that's it for me today. I'll see everybody next week. The garage is now closed.